Greetings. I am Tom Merle. Welcome to the celebration. We know you could be anywhere. So the fact that you are here today sharing your greatest gifts, your time and energy, it means the world to me. I hope you know that you are valued, you are loved, and you are appreciated just as you are. Miata is back in the house for episode two. How are you, Miata? I am well. <laughs> How are you feeling after getting to see what it's like? What I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I I really like, you know, my brain is whirling, Tom, <laughs> which is which is fun. Agreed. Okay, well, they've seen what we look like. We can wave. Awesome. Perfect. All right. So the place we said we were going to start off is with Mieta's question. I wrote it down. Or do you want to just start by rephrasing it or adding any additional thoughts you have? What would you like to do? Um, sure. And I'm so glad you wrote it down um, so that you can help me with this. But I think what I'm really wondering is how you are taking this expansion of how you view the life experience. How are you taking that and applying it to your actual day-to-day journey? So I love the fact that you've shared this journey from, I was all about the pursuit of happiness and joy um, to this now understanding of just the infinite possibilities um, and how that has led you to clarity that it cannot be about doing, it cannot be about accomplishing, like that can't be um, the point. But so um, I, I would just be so grateful if you could talk about what that means in terms of how you're living your life now. Great follow-up questions. Mm. Uh, I know Erica Badu didn't actually originate this quote, but I think we all know it because of her. The and and it's gendered, but it's universal. The the uh, he who knows something knows that he knows nothing at all. Mm. And I think I that's why I like talking about infinity because there is the people who have their PhD in this when you're like, so do you get how this applies to life? They're like, no. It's very confusing when you apply this stuff to life. It makes sense, totally makes sense mathematically. And so that's the like, I think my goal is to know God. That's like my goal. And God is not nameable. It's not intellectual can't understand god that's what messes things up is it's like no this is god and, and and this is right and this is wrong it's like there's there's no way that my human mind can understand god and there's no way my human mind also can understand the point of all of this and i think that's why i like infinity because it like jams my mind you know, it's like it creates the error message of like, oh, okay, it's all happening, right? There's no, there's no way I can intellectually, rationally lay out the perfect plan. Hmm. So first of all, I don't know. I don't know. So some tangible things I'm really trying to do is to feel what it feels like to be in the present moment, not in some sort of low-level fight or flight. So I, I recognize how much I rely upon patterns to feel safe. I like, you know, one of my understandings of like trauma and PTSD is, is that you are just constantly scanning your environment. 
situational awareness at an all-time high. You're just like scanning, 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 because you're trying to find anything that might be a little bit out of the ordinary. And then you're like mm-hmm. anticipating that, right? Or you're like, I'm creating worst case scenarios and then I'm planning for them, right? It's like, cause if then the worst, anything that happens less than the worst case scenario, I can handle. Right. And and so that's a really challenging place to exist in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also not the kind of creativity that we've all experienced where you're not worried about anything. You know, like when you're in the shower and it's like, oh, that's the solution. Because you're like relaxed, you're safe, you're calm. So I'm trying to find more and more what does it feel like to one of, one of my mentors, Jessica Estevez. I don't know if it's still what she says, but back when we were working together, her goal was to love without fear. And I, I think that there's like a lot of really helpful stuff out there of like courage is doing something even when you're afraid or like this and that. But a lot of what you hear people talk about around fear is like, it's, it's a, it's kind of like a thing of the imagination, you know, like a lot of, Mm -hmm. it's like imagination and then like muscle memory. So I think like a part of this acceptance stuff is how do I, stop using my imagination and thoughts and minds to just constantly be surveilling and creating contingency plans. Yeah. And just feel that like this thing that every religion and spiritual practice talks about. That's just like such deep trust and integration and kind of like a dissolving into that doesn't matter what happens next because you're just seated so comfortably in the present moment that I'm not creating new problems with my mind. So I'm Mm -hmm. trying to get there because otherwise I feel like when I approach things from this place of like anxiety that I'm almost inevitably creating a like boomerang where it's like, doesn't matter where I go, I, I bring myself right back to me, you know, like, yeah. oh, I, a whole year has gone by. And I just like last year in July, like one year later, the same thing, different content, different story. I went a whole bunch of new places, but really the same core stuff that keeps following me. So that's kind of like, I guess I'm like trying to just take things back to like its foundation of like, I don't think I understand the point of life. I don't think I'm skilled at setting goals because a whole bunch of things I didn't want to happen happened and I was glad it happened and a whole bunch of things I wanted to happen didn't happen and I'm glad they didn't happen. So like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how good I am at being like, here's what I think should happen next. So I'm more and more trying to be like, how can I move from that place of like in the moment creation? And I think then I guess like, the service part is, I think when I'm like, you can move away from the mind's desire to control and name and get into this thing that can't be named and can't be explained. It can only be felt. Mm-hmm. And then trying to move from that place. I feel like, I guess, like that is a service in the way that getting out of the way and letting something serve through you that isn't separate from you that is you this yeah too like that's that's where i'm trying to get to that's what i'm trying to be which i am which we all are so i guess guess my goal is like how do i more and more be myself fully without constant constant anxiety yeah yeah i love I mean, I love everything you said, but but the last thing really jumped out at me, essentially where you said, getting out of the way, getting myself out of the way so that things, I forget exactly how you put it, but things can happen through me. 
And that, that really resonates with me with regards to the work. I feel like it's just every day of getting out of the way, like all of the wants and desires and frustrations and the like that all just blocks. It just, it just blocks. Um, And I'm still trying to, I guess a part of what I want to do is I want to stop trying to explain it to myself, to sort of make it, put it all in a tidy explanation. I want to stop doing that. Um, But I do feel like my work is about getting out of the way. Like I really, I really like uh, the way you, you summarized that, you know, something that has me just um, really, really thinking about these things a lot is that I, I work with so many people who are who are struggling right like that's a part of when you do any kind of of coaching work um and and i am always like I'm genuinely trying to put my finger on things that can help people not exist under the weight of so much pain, right? And so that's part of what's behind my questions is, um, how how we can all oh i don't know tom it's like i i believe that life is hard but i don't believe that that means that we have to carry this weight um and so yeah like i guess i guess i do feel like it comes down to figuring out how to get out of our own way and if we can offer any if we can offer any support to others who are also trying to get out of their own way right yeah one one of the things that kind of jumped out to me when you were sharing I was like ah okay is one of my big ahas has been the like how you do something matters even more than where you're trying to go. Mm-hmm. And I've worked in the nonprofit field for 10 years. And now I've coming up on almost a decade in the entrepreneurship field and specifically working with entrepreneurs who have like a mission greater than themselves. Mm-hmm. And the how we're getting there in both industries is is toxic. And yes. there is the, but we're the good people. But we're doing important work. And so when you turn service into a to-do list, mm-hmm. that's when things get complicated because then things are getting in the way of our to-do list all the time, all the time. And the other challenging thing, especially in marketing, is if the tools I'm using to get my message out there, right, are the same tools that the people who are, quote unquote, like creating bad 
why is it that I'm using them? Right? Like one is us first them. This is like a very one mm-hmm. in marketing that you could sell anything with us first them. The like all of your problems, like your enemies are my enemies. All your problems, they're your enemies. And I love your heroes, you know? And the way to success, like all of this kind of stuff, this like heroes and villains, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we use that supposedly as the good people, right? Like, right, of course, in politics, if you're a Democrat, you want to be talking about, I'm not Trump. I hate Trump. I'm not Trump. You should vote for me, right? And then it's the same tool Trump is using. This like us first them. Your enemies are my enemies. Your heroes are my heroes. So it works for them. It works for us. But where's it going to get us? So it's... <laughs> It's it's challenging not to turn anything you're doing into an end goal where once I get here, then we'll all be saved. We'll all be happy. We'll all be good to go. <clears throat> because then it can become very easy to ends justify the means. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I guess I don't believe um, there's a book I really loved. Uh, and I'm going to probably mispronounce the author's name, but it's called The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, I think, Sinek. And what I loved about that book is he is saying there is no, there is no end point once we get here, then, you know, all is good with the world. That doesn't exist. And that part of the uh, place we find ourselves in as a world is the playing of very, very, very finite games. So I guess, you know, I I hear everything, I hear everything that you're saying. And I do believe that it's not so much about painting villains and heroes. I don't so much see it as villains and heroes versus standing for something. And so I agree with you that I I you know I think we can very easily just get in a very downward spiral if if it's all about well vote for me cuz I'm not Trump, right? Or uh, come do this thing because this thing isn't that thing. Um, the whole villains and and heroes thing, but but I guess what I don't want is to kind of then exist in this space of so then it's all hopeless there's nothing to be done because i do believe that there are things that are important and that can um move us forward for lack of a better way of putting it not that not that we will ever have all the answers, but it it does, or anything close to it, but it does feel like seeking to genuinely improve the human condition. Ah, but isn't that important? Is, is are are you pausing to to think yeah. more or pausing for no. me to jump in? No, pausing for you. Okay. <laughs> do I sound like fatalistic and nothing matters and all those kind of things? Do I do I sound like that? Well, uh I feel like a little. It's it's so interesting, right? Because I don't see you. 
I do not see you as a fatalistic person. I just don't at all. But I'm still struggling to um, take these things we're saying and not have them be fatalistic. Like what I you're saying, um, you know, you're seeking to know God. That really resonates with me. Um, getting out of the way, that really resonates with me. But I am really curious for someone who has had years of experience in the not-for-profit, years of experience in the for-profit world, um, and saying, you know, we're getting a lot wrong. And it's really um, like the other thing Simon Sinek talks about in his book is the kind of moral slide, I think is what he calls it. And man, I mean, man, do I like, I see that. And, and there's a huge, um, there are so many, like, I, I can't even begin to wrap my head around the problems of capitalism and the way that particularly um, American society is just sometimes feels like it's being buried under the weight of this kind of failed experiment. And I uh, do feel that, okay, this is the world in which we live right now. And so what role can those of us who can play in making things better? One of the things I've become self-aware of of like what's my intersection or concentric circle and things and i recognize because of like the weird way my brain is i'm a really good thread puller and oftentimes i'm able to pull threads for people who then are able to go like oh boom this so i don't necessarily i have a lot of threads and questions that i don't have answers to so i don't know but one thing that I just keep being like is yes to all the things you're saying. And when we now set out to do those things, how do we keep ourselves back from going into ends justify the means mm, thinking yes. moments, mm -hmm. actions? And it's so subtle how quickly we are in like, ah, oh, this is just a small compromise but it's for the mission and it's it's complicated by the fact that most of us now are like a lot of this work we talk about is going to be through tech and algorithms mm -hmm. social media things like this which already we have now stepped into technology that is not there for our betterment as a society it's there to right. make money so already like positive message on social media already is going to become effed up because the goal of the platform that we're putting our piece of content on that's so positive is to keep people on the platform so the only way to keep people on the platform is to manipulate them by right. whatever means you can and the means by which they can surpass our cognitive abilities to control ourselves so it's just it requires like really nuanced and tough conversations that's why i love when my friend lil tanky comes on the episodes and people are like always hit me up with questions and i if, if you haven't listened to any of his like one of the big things that i get from whenever lil tanky comes on is like 
we have to be willing to ask bigger questions about why are we doing this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you have like a mission critical task you feel like you're doing and well, this has, you know, for example, with something like climate change, it could very easily become, well, the people who aren't on board with fixing the planet, they shouldn't like something should be done to them in like a forceful way, you know, where well, we could very easily become like save the earth fascists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a positive yeah. message can yeah. very easily become fascism. So how do we? That's like a big picture thing. How do I just, how can we avoid that? Because anytime we become ends justify the means, we're almost always starting to participate in destructive behavior. Yeah. So I don't know. I just know that what we're doing isn't working, not working. And a, a large part of it is because we're like nonprofits. You have to fundraise. Mm-hmm. We have already stepped into the land of fuck, because who's going to be able to give you money? Most often people who systemically have some sort of capacity to make money easier than other people. So their passion projects get funded. So already we're screwed. So it's it's just tough and more complicated. And the like, once we get there, it'll all be okay. And then we can talk about it. Isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I think that's true. I I do think it's true that the system is broken. Um and that we need to be willing to have m these kinds of conversations. Um and I also feel like so many people are frozen in the brokenness of the system. And I am definitely wary of contributing to ongoing frozenness of it's all broken and therefore there's nothing I can do and I can't make the, I'm not going to be able to make anything better. So F it kind of thing. And yeah, so I guess I guess I'm just I'm just wanting to reiterate what you're saying which is we have to be willing to have the conversations and to keep looking, keep digging deep, being will willing to dig deep in ourselves and uh and walk that walk that line you know uh years ago when i started my company when i started abundance bound i had had gotten myself into just massive financial trouble right and learning how to get myself out of that financial trouble. Uh, I spent countless, I mean, thousands of dollars, right? And there was this real, and, and continues to be for me, this real uh, issue with the fact that I used credit cards that already had you know, well over $75,000 in debt on them to pay for programs that were suggesting that they could help me get out of financial trouble, right? And that became a really important part of my mission was how could I provide financial education, guidance, support in meaningful ways 
for a, and I'm going to put this in quotes, affordable cost, right? But, or and, in the 18 years that I have been in business, that part of our mission makes the 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 opposite side of that is that to be able to keep going we must be able to financially sustain right and i i say all this because i think that this is a part of the dilemma um i absolutely consider myself to like i feel like i've dug really deep and i've done an enormous amount of work and my my motivation is not the big bank account and the like you know financial quote unquote rewards but i do also to be able to keep doing the work have to have a sustainable financial model and so as we look at this question and these questions that we're raising today and these things that we're talking about, very practically, I feel like we need to have these conversations and how do we like how do we avoid becoming the kind of moral police? Well, this is an accept amount of money for Miata to decide she needs to take home. And this is an acceptable amount of money for her to pay her team. But that over there is not an acceptable amount. Like, and and again, Tom, it, it does come down to me also to then, like, how do we not stay frozen? Um, yeah. Mm. Well, I think once again, you have set us up perfectly for the next episode. So I've written down your questions. I recognize both episodes you've like, it's been your turn to kind of share, which I think is vulnerable to think out loud. And then I'm like, awesome, we're stopping here. So <laughs> is there is there anything I can do to like receive what you said? Do you want me to share a little bit now? Or is that okay if we no, because I okay. I get to know that we're going to keep going. So okay, perfect. perfect. Good. <laughs> Still, it could be tough when you're the person that's like, here's what I think. And then it's like, perfect. We'll talk about that later. You know, that's so I, I, I do recognize that. So I wanted to check in on it. Okay, let's do the logistics. Shameless self-promotion or whatever you, you want to do it. Where can the folks get at you? What do you want them to know? For those who are like, okay. I want to jump into Abundance Bound or Miata's world. What What's usually the way you suggest that they do that? Yeah. So for people who want to uh, be able to engage in conversation with me more, um, I am just, I am, I can be found at AbundanceBound.com and at Abundance Bound on really all the social media channels, but just being really honest, Instagram is where I feel like I am focused on saying the things that I uh, want to be saying. I love it. Abundance Bound has changed my life, y'all, in ways you can't even imagine. Mieta has changed my life in ways you can't even imagine. I highly recommend you check out Abundance Bound. For me personally, head to tomearl.me slash DCM invite, direct connect method. And the things that Mieta and I are talking about, we get together every month as a group. Well, Mieta's not a part of it. I mean, I'd love for you to be, but I don't want to give the impression that Mieta and I do it. Uh, but people like us, we get together and 
we journal, we create, we write, and then we have these tough conversations. So if something like that interests you, check it out or at Tom Roll Artist. Miata, what is your... I don't think we did our closing ritual last time. I think I built it all up and we didn't do it. But the closing ritual always is to share an invitation. So what would you like to invite people to do, to think, to see, to think about, to step into, to become? What's your invitation? Ooh, oh, that's such a great question. Um, goodness, Tom, what is my invitation? I think I really, these days, want to really invite people to genuinely explore, um, to question, um, to ask questions about the things that uh, we, ha- you, each of us as individuals have decided are real and truth and right, uh, to, to really ask questions and explore and investigate. I think that's, that's what I'm inviting myself to do. So I'll extend it to everyone. I love that. Well, I think that I want to agree with that invitation. So then I will have mine be, since you said it perfect, a little different invitation to check out the artist, Valerie June, like the month. Awesome artist. Great music. Enjoy. Mieta, thank you for episode two. I'm so excited for episode three. Perfect. (laughs) And to all those who are listening, as always, I'm wishing you peace and blessings. Thank you. Oh, one, one more thing. I'd love to continue the conversation. Feel free to join me at tomroll.com slash join. Subscribe below or let's connect on social media. Tom Earl Artist. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>